What ho, adventurers! Ancient Grim here, back once more with an updated version of my create an interactive campaign starting screen that rocks. Let's hit it. So I've got my world here, got it all open. You guys already know how to do that. I'm hoping. This, this isn't a, I'm going to show you how to do every little thing in Foundry, because honestly, I don't know every little thing in Foundry, but I'm going to show you how to do this. First thing we're going to do is we're going to install a module called Block View. So we're going to go to here, Manage Modules, and Lock View. We're going to save our module settings. Now we're going to configure that. We're going to go to our, our game settings, configure settings, module settings user configuration and we're going to check everybody in here i actually already had done this while testing so apparently it remembered you're going to want to check all these save save okay next we're going to create our scene you can name the scene whatever you want i'm going to set, call it home you can even create a, a folder if you want it, it, however you want to set up and directorize your system. I'm just going to go home. So I'm going to uncheck this. I'm going to set up my background and background and or foreground images. I've done this so that the background is separated from the foreground because I had some things I wanted to try and I thought it might be cool to have stuff in between. So that's what I did, but you can just do a background image. So I'm going to go to assets, background here, and I'm going to pick my backsplash here, and I'm going to pick my foreground here. I'm going to set my background to black. You can set it whatever color you want. I'm going to set my initial view. I'm going to go to grid. I'm going to turn down the grid's opacity. I'm going to go to lighting. I'm going to turn off token vision. I'm going to Turn off fog exploration. Ambience is obviously where you can set up your sounds and all that stuff to play when the scene opens. I'm going to go to lock view. I'm going to lock the pan, lock the zoom, lock the bo bounding box. I'm going to automatically fit it to outside. And I'm going to force the initial view. And I'm going to hit save. And yes. And there we have it. Now. If I have a player, what I would do if I was you, because sometimes this gets a little wonky and you got to do a little tweaking. Uh, hopefully that won't be the case. But what we're going to do next is I'm going to create a player. Because we're going to need a player and we're going to need a character for that player for all of the triggers and macros and everything that we're going to create in this. So I'm going to just set that up now. So I'm going to go to settings user management i have i've already created the player but you just create a player here save and return log back into your world or session now i'm going to go to actors i'm going to create a folder this is what i do anyways or what i would do uh players i'm going to make it blue I'm going to create a player called, or a character called Flurg. And let's give him a, let's give him a venture mail save. So he's got a token and we're going to close this actually. Yeah. Now let's assign him to the player. So click him, configure permissions. Player one is the owner. Okay, so now if I log in as player one, you can open up a browser, go to your, your shared IP or whatever that you need to do. You're gonna to wanna to use your network IP. So the 192 or whatever it is. And open that up, go in there and log in as the player and you'll be able to see what the player is seeing. So I'm gonna show that to you. Go. I'm gonna select my user, player one. I'm gonna join the game session. 
I'm going to select, he's going to select Flurg. Let's change his color to yellow. Save the configuration. As you can see, there's a little bit cut off here because we have all of this space taken up. So you could make adjustments for that. I'm happy with it. It's, it's good enough. He can see all of my navigation. Um, so it's good. Uh, we don't have any black around here. Everything's everything's looking good. So let's go back and move on to the next bit. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, well, the first thing is like the 10th thing. But so what we have to do is we have to create an actor, a transparent actor that's not visible on the screen that will handle the trigger. So it'll know that when I click here to execute, our macro or scene change or whatever. And that would be a macro that's gonna do it. And that's where Trigger Happy comes in. But first we need this UI element. So as you can see, I, I have a folder here called UI, and I'm gonna keep all of my UI elements under that just to help clean stuff up. I'm gonna create one here. I'm gonna call this player open cheat UI button. Call it a button. And then we're gonna change this to be a transparent person. Well, transparent token. I will leave a link to this transparent token for you guys to download in case you don't have one and you don't know how to make one. It's essentially just a transparent PNG file. Size is irrelevant really. Uh, so let's select that and move on. As you can see now, there's no picture here. We're gonna close that. Now we're going to drag this out over our character and we're going to hide it, make it so that people can't see it. We're going to go to the settings and we're going to change the appearance. And we're going to say the width is 3.5. Now, obviously you're going to have to pay, play with these so that it'll cover all of your word, whatever your menu item is. And I'm just going to position it over that button. So next we need the macro that the trigger is going to kick off because we need the macro in order to build the trigger. You can do this in any order, but I'm trying to make it in order that makes sense to show you guys how to do it. There's no hard and fast rules, Harry. So we're gonna call this there open character sheet. change this to script and we're going to type game dot actors dot get name parentheses character dot name and parentheses dot sheet dot render parentheses true and parentheses semicolon and save macro now we can create the trigger happy section so this is what we need to do we have Trigger Happy all set up. We've installed it, but we don't have it completely set up because in order for Trigger Happy to work, you need one of one of two things. You either need a journal entry called Trigger Happy, which you would then put all of your trigger commands in, or you need a folder called Trigger Happy where you would put journal entries inside that folder, which would then become which would be parsed by Trigger Happy to look for the triggers. So that would allow you to have a journal entry for each individual trigger and write as much logic as you want for each individual one. I think it's that's the better option is to use the folder. So I'm going to create a folder called Trigger Happy. That's with a capital T, trigger, space, capital H, happy. And I'm going to select a red color here. Okay, now we have our Trigger Happy. And we have our button and we have our macro and all we need now is a trigger for this button to interact with or to glue it all together as it. So I'm going to click this and I'm going to say open player sheet trigger. Now this is pretty easy. You, you only really need to type one thing so far and that's gonna be at trigger and what the action is for the trigger, which is gonna be click. 
The rest of it's going to be drag and drop. So we're going to go back to our actors. We're going to take our UI and we're just going to pull this over. So this is telling the trigger that whenever I do whatever the action is with this item, the open the player open sheet button, whatever we named our UI item, do whatever comes next. So this is going to say player open sheet button, and then we're going to say at trigger square bracket click. So whenever we click it, what do we do? We want to run the macro. So now we just come down here to the macro, or we can look in the folder, grab the macro, and we're just going to pull it over here. And we're going to save. And we're going to close. And we're going to close. Now, if we go back to our player's view, if they click this, it sh number one, they shouldn't see anything highlight when they do hover over it. And number two, it should open their character sheet when they click it. So cross fingers. Okay, here we go. Boom, there's, this, there's Flurg, Flurg the Mighty. The next thing, just to reinforce what we're learning here is the journal. So we are going to create a UI element that we're gonna place on the, on the canvas. We're gonna create a macro that's gonna open the journal. And then we're gonna create a trigger that says, hey, when somebody clicks this UI element, run this macro. So it's exactly the same as what we did here. So let's create it. And we're gonna keep the naming convention the same. Player, open, journal, button. You can name these whatever you want. They don't have to be what I'm naming them, but try to make them so that you can find them easy. Let's change this to the transparent token again. All right, now we're gonna drag this out onto the canvas. Toggle the visibility. Blah, 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 blah. Go into the settings, change the size, reposition it. Now let's write our macro. So this is going to be, we're gonna create a macro. We are going to call it player open journal. It's going to be a script game dot journal dot get character name parentheses character dot name and parentheses dot eat dot render parentheses true and parentheses and there we go. Now in order to do this, though, there is one more piece that we need. We need a journal with the character's name. So let's create that. Otherwise, this isn't going to work. Because as you can see, if we look in the macro, it's looking for the journal that has the same name as the character clicking the button. That's what that means. I'm going to go through the game assets, look for the journals, get the journal that has the name character character dot name, which is our character's name. Now, there's a bunch of other ways to do this. This was the quickest and easiest that I found. If you have other ways to do this, by all means, share them. So let's create that journal entry. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder for the player journals. Player journals. Here's our player journals. And it has to have the same name as the player character. So clerk is our name. Boom. And chronic of the mighty Lurg. Save. So now that we have our journal created, we can create our trigger. So let's do that. So we're going to create our trigger. We're going to call this open player journal trigger. Create that. And we're going to go back over here to our elements. We're going to say open journal. When somebody interacts with this element, we're going to trigger, sorry, at trigger, square brackets, click, and square brackets. And then we're going to 
pull our open journal in, save it, close it, and review it as the player. There it is, the Chronicling of the Mighty Flurg. So that's quick access to his journal without jumping around. So that's it for now. The next time we'll get into, in the next video, we'll get into doing the rules and opening the PDF. And then we'll also get into possibly uh, scenes, switching to another scene and all that happy nonsense in jazz. But I figured this way I could condense these down so that the videos aren't 30 minutes long and then we can just link them back and forth. Um, so I hope this helps. Uh, please, as always, like, subscribe, all that nonsense that you guys have to do. It really helps um, get me out there and show off the show off everything. To, you know how it works. Everybody knows how it works. So until next time, stay grim. Mm -hmm.